Hey everybody, it's the next video in our series on pro the process plugin for SPSS. Today we're working on model one, which is moderation or two-way interactions. Since I've already covered this a couple of times in my channel, we're going to focus on this one to do covariates and then next week we'll do categorical variables, kind of the same way we did for mediation. So um, interactions are typically visualized as this moderator variable here between the XY relationship. In this example, we're going to add two covariates to also control for or adjust for <clears throat> some other variables that we think might be important. Okay, this is a popular request on the channel is how to add covariates to your analysis. So with moderation, what we're going to do is basically create an interaction and we're going to look at the simple slopes. Simple slopes are akin to the idea of post hoc tests to understanding how the, there are differences in the data across areas of the data. So there's often a temptation to think of these as groups or as levels, but really it's like if I focus on one area of the data, what does that relationship look like versus if I focus on another area? So we might look at people below the mean and above the mean. This particular data set is from R again. <clears throat> and what we're going to do is we're going to predict the income of a particular state. So this is like the average income by state. We're going to use illiteracy as our independent variable. And we might, we might expect that as illiteracy increases, income decreases. But we're really going to control for the population of the state and the area of the state as two variables that we think might impact the, the overall uh, income. Then the last thing we're going to do is uh, use the murder rate of the state as the interactive component. Because we might expect that as there's more murders, um, there might be less income because of the way that um, crime rates are often tied to low income areas. <clears throat> All right. Now, if I want to calculate power, the first thing I have to do, just like with mediation, is figure out how many IVs there are going to be. <clears throat> and with that, um, what we have to remember is that there's an interaction component. So we'll have illiteracy, right? uh, population, area, uh, and murder, but then we'll also have the illiteracy uh, by murder interaction. So you kind of get a plus one when it comes to having variables for power because you also have to include that interaction. And so you can't really forget that component because um, that will affect power because the more variables you have, the less degrees of freedom, um, or no, sorry, the more degrees of freedom that you have <clears throat> in a regression model. Okay. So let's use G power to figure this out. Right. And so we figured out we have five variables, one, two, three, four, and interaction is number five. We're going to go over here to F test because we're going to predict the overall R squared for the entire model. We're going to come down here to linear multiple regression, R squared deviation from zero. You could also do R squared increase if you think about the interaction as an increasing component. So that would allow you to test the power for just the interaction. Um, I could click determine here. Pick a squared multiple correlation. So what would we expect the overall model to be? So let's say it's uh, a nice small one, so 0.03 maybe. Calculate transfer to main. 0 0.05, 0 0.80 are kind of industry standards in psychology, but pick your own. Number of predictors here is five. So I would need 421 participants to make this work at a small sample size. Uh, I'm sorry, a small effect size, uh, which I clearly don't have because it's about states and there are only 50 of those. Right? So that would be one option. <clears throat> Another option might be to do R squared increase, thinking about how much the interaction is going to add to the model. Right? So here we would click direct and you would actually estimate the partial R or like kind of um, addition of R squared of the um, interaction component by itself. So let's say we think that the interaction is actually going to add 0.03 to the previous overall R squared. Now we can hit calculate and transfer to main. Power is 0 0.80. The number of tested predictors here would be one for the interaction component 
and overall would be five. So we're adding that one extra, uh, and there are five total. And now we need 256 people. So this depends on which direction you wanna take it from. From the overall model, that would be the first route. From the addition to the model, that would be the second route. Okay. And I'll add screenshots of those to our document that we're making here. So let's hop right into our data set in SPSS and see if we can go through data screening, which um, in this series, I'm just walking through it, assuming that you know it. So if you don't, there are some other videos that you can watch on our channel that explain every single little step of this, and then we'll get into the analysis. Okay. All right, so we've got some extra variables in here we don't really need, but let's screen the ones that we have. So let's start by looking for any inaccurate data or missing data. So let's go analyze, descriptives, and frequencies. I'm interested in population, income, illiteracy, <coughs> excuse me, murder, and area. I don't really want frequency tables because these are all continuous variables, but maybe I want the mean, the min and the max, the standard deviation. You can check skew and kurtosis as well if you're interested in that. We're gonna handle normality here in a different way. Click okay. And what I do here is there here is there any missing data? No. And then I would look at the mean of each of these variables. Now these are wildly different, um, and so that might be a concern in a regression analysis to have very different variables. Um, in this one, it doesn't cause us any problems, but just a warning. And I would just make sure that my min and my max don't um, go outside the range of the expected data. So I wouldn't expect any of these to be negative, for example. You no know, states can have negative area. But then I just want to make sure that these are scaled appropriately. Okay. <clears throat> all right, so all that looks good because this is again data provided to us by R. So hopefully it would be right. So we've checked off um, accuracy and missing data. Let's dive into outliers now. So I can create a outlier analysis based on the, the model without an interaction. So I could go analyze, regression, sorry, linear here, and calculate the, um, the outliers based on all the predictors, um, just without that interaction. All right, so we're predicting income, so it goes in the dependent box with population, illiteracy, murder, and area. And if you wanted to, you could create that interaction and add it in. So I've never understood why SPSS doesn't have this interactive component right here, but they, they have it for NOVAs, but not for regression. Under statistics, oops, sorry, under plots, Z pred and Y, Z residual and X, histogram and normal probability plot. This is going to give us our homogeneity, homoscedasticity scatter plot, our normality histogram, and our linearity um, Q, Q plot. Continue. Under save, I'm going to ask for the big three distance values. So Mahalo Novus, Cooks, and Leverage. Continue. And the reason we don't use statistics is because we're not interested in this regression. We're going to use process to give us the interaction regression. <clears throat> Old habits. So mostly here, I'm not, I'm not going to look at any of this just yet. I'm going to hit the little star button here to go back to the data, and I'm going to look at these values. Okay. So let's go back to our sheet. We're going to have trouble finding the, uh, the chi-square sheet, because I always seem to have trouble in these videos finding it. But the first thing we're going to do is figure out our cutoff score for Mahalanobis. So Mahalanobis is based on the number of variables in the equation. So at the moment, we have four. Income, so let's go over illiteracy, income, sorry, is the predictor, uh, predicted value, illiteracy, population, area, and murder. So we only have four because we haven't included the interaction yet. So our degrees of freedom is four. We're going to use a p-value of less than 0 0.001 because we want these to be very weird before we um, start to, <clears throat> before we start to exclude people. Let me open up my chi-square table here. You can Google this um, to look for chi-square table. Open one up here. 
bring this over here. There we go. So here's our chi-square table. Unfortunately, Adobe likes to take over your computer when you open it. There it goes. So here on degrees, four degrees of freedom, we're going to go all the way across here and go to P less than 0 0.001. So this cutoff score is 18.47. It's got 18.47. Let's go ahead and calculate the rest of these while we're here. So Cook's value gives me 4 divided by n, that's 50, minus k. k is the number of predictors, so we have our 4 that we've been talking about, minus 1. And then leverage here is going to be 2 times k, which we just said was 4, plus, plus 2, divided by 50. <clears throat> Phone calculators are very useful in these instances, so we've got... 4 divided by 50 minus 4 minus 1 is 45. And then leverage here is 8 plus 2 is 10 divided by 50. <clears throat> Point 2. Okay. So from there, what we're going to do is create some columns that accurate, that indicate whether or not someone was an outlier. Okay. So our first cutoff score is 1847. So let's go back to SPSS here. We're going to transform compute variable. If you've been watching the other videos, we've been calling this bad Mahal because this is the people who would be outliers on Mahal numbers. You can call it Mahal out, anything that makes sense to you. I'm going to move Mahalanobis distance over here, and I'm going to say anybody who's greater than 18.47 is an outlier. Okay. Click the button to go back. And now this will put mark all of these um, states, since they're not really participants, whose scores are an outlier. Okay. And this one here is going to be Alaska. Um, they're in alphabetical order. <laughs> so uh, we've already got them kind of pegged as an outlier. And they're going to be kind of an outlier because of their high murder rate, but very low population. Okay. All right, let's do that twice more. Once for cooks and once for leverage. So we're going to rename this as bad cooks. <clears throat> okay. Double click on it to get it to move over. Anybody greater than 0 0.089 is an outlier. And so again, we see Alaska has popped up. One more time. Okay. And we could do leverage greater than 0 0.200. <clears throat> and I would always recommend three decimal places for these numbers because they are small. So that gives you be better precision. So let's click, go back to data. All right, now I could scan through these and sort the variables. But the easiest thing to do is create a total score. Let's go transform, compute. Uh, let's call this bad total. I'm gonna do bad Mahal plus bad cooks plus bad leverage. Okay. And now I can easily click on the data, sort, descending, um, and that would allow me to look at who the outliers are. <clears throat> so what we have are three people who I would consider outliers because it's two strikes you're out. And generally that is because, for the first two, it's probably because they have a low population but high murder rate. Okay, and then the last one could be, a combina it's probably a combination of high values on all of these variables if we look at the min and the max. And so I could decide, do I want to leave them in or do I want to take them out? In this instance, we're going to leave them in because we know these values are true. Um, if this were participant-based data, I would take them out in a heartbeat. <laughs> um, but if we wanted to take them out but not delete anyone from our data, we could do select cases and use our bad total as a filtering column and decide whether or not we want to use the filter. So this really allows you to do this with and without outliers if you want to test it both ways to report the differences for both ways not to cheat. 
<laughs> so in this case, I would say that we had three outliers, but we left them in. Okay. Now what we're going to do is run through our assumptions. So additivity, normality, linearity, homogeneity, and homoscedasticity. Okay. Additivity is going to be super important in a moderation analysis because um, what we're concerned about is that we don't have variables that are too highly correlated. So let's go analyze, correlate, bivariate. And we're not going to put in Y, so we're going to leave um, income out, but all of the X variables, so population, literacy, murder, and area, <coughs> hit OK. Because we do want them to be correlated with Y. So we want to leave Y out here. So just a reminder that Y here is income. And now we want to make sure that none of our correlations are hitting this 0.9 is particularly problematic. 0.7 is where we're going to start to get suppression effects. So remember, just look here at the Pearson correlation. These don't seem to be super correlated. Uh, we do have illiteracy and murder fairly highly correlated. Okay. Uh, it's not too surprising given that we expect those to moderate. Uh, so if moderators are often correlated, so we're going to have to deal with that by using centering. Okay. So these two variables might be problematic. Okay. Uh, it does not look, though, like any of our other ones are significant. So be sure you look at the Pearson correlation and not the significance line. Now, I didn't delete anybody, so I don't have to rerun this. But if I had to rerun the analysis just to kind of show you how you do it, since I haven't been deleting people, um, I could run this regression one more time if I had deleted those people and I would just hit OK. <clears throat> okay. Now, when you rerun these, just as kind of a reminder of what happens, it will rerun all of the um, outlier statistics for you. And I just always recommend deleting those or clearing them so that you don't delete outliers twice um, because we don't really want to do that. We wanted to calculate outliers based on the original analysis. <clears throat> So charts in order here. Let's look at our histogram. <coughs> Excuse me. So we want this to be centered over zero between two and two. And I would say that's mostly true here. We've got a little bit of skew, positive skew, meaning there's no missing data here, because this here is not as tall. So there's a little bit more on the negative side than the positive side, um, which would give us a positive skew because the data is missing from the positive end. Okay. Mostly normal. I have at least 30 participants, so, you know, mostly multivariate normal. Now, income's hard to predict, but we got a pretty nice linearity trend here. So a little bit off of the, of the line, but pretty close. Okay. This would be problematic if it continued off the line or maybe if it made this S jive or O jive curve sometimes called. Okay, so linearity is looking pretty good. Well, let's look here at our standardized re residual plot. <clears throat> So we want the data to be centered between zero, both directions. And it does actually run from three to three, but there's like a hard stop here at one. So these two data points here are kind of stretching it out, but this would be what the best example of raining that I've seen in a while, where there is a spot here and all the dots fall below it and maybe only a couple above it. So it's kind of like the cloud line and all the rest of it's raining. So I'd say we have some problems here with homogeneity. And that might be due to the effects of using wildly different scaled variables. Now for homoscedasticity, you know, other than these two little screwballs, it's all right. There's not as much data down here that I would like. So remember, you want the dots to be kind of an even spread all the way across. So this is kind of messy. Um, I would say that this is tricky. This is iffy on these assumptions. Um, likely because of the scale and the fact that we're using, you know, real data is messy. So this is state data. I would state that maybe it doesn't quite meet these assumptions, <coughs> but um, we know the data is accurate. All right, so that's all of our data screening. How do I run moderation? All right, so let's go analyze, regression. Now we're gonna use process version three. And now we're going to use model one, which is the default. So this is a <clears throat> basic regression, uh, basic moderation analysis. Okay, I'm going to predict income. And then just a reminder kind of what we're actually testing here. So our CVs are population area, area 
Our X is illiteracy and our M is murder. M for murder. All right. So with the change in process, now the moderator always goes in W. It used to be that you could stick either one in this mediator box, but that changed a little bit ago. So we're going to move murder into moderator W. Or this won't run. Okay, so don't put anything in the mediator box and pick model one. It'll yell at you. Population is a covariate, area is a covariate, and then illiteracy is our X variable here. We want to pick model number one out of our options. We want to pick options here. We could generate the code for visualizing interactions. This is an ugly graph, but if you wanted to graph it in SPSS, you could. Um, we want to mean center the construction of products. This is only useful if both variables are continuous. Um, and we will want to do that to control for multicollinearity. And also it aids in the interpretation of the simple slopes. Okay. So we would definitely want to use those. Um, moderations and conditioning, you could change your P value that you're interested in seeing the moderation at. So we might say we only want to see if it's less than 0.05. Um, I'll leave it at 0.10. Okay. What value do you want to use that moderation at? So 16th, 50th, and 84th percentiles. I think one standard deviation above and below the mean is way more common. Um, that is, to me, was first introduced to me in the Cohen, Cohen, Aiken, and West book. And most people call these simple slopes. Okay. Both are valid options. Just tell people which one you did. And then if you want to see the Johnson name in. Johnson Neyman allows you to find, to probe the interaction more. So let's hit continue and go. Um, okay, and then hit okay. So it'll take a minute to run. Done. All right, so again, I'm going to highlight this. We're going to move over to Word to make this a little bit easier to write it on. <clears throat> All right, so what happened? <laughs> let me hit save before something crashes here. <laughs> there we go. So let me scroll up all the way to the top. So the first thing you're going to see is all of your variables. It does chop off the variables if they're more than eight characters. It's going to give me my model summary. So if I wanted to report this in APA style, I could do F equals. Pick my two degrees of freedom. Remember, this doesn't line up very well. So we're going to go 5 and 44. This one here is F. So that's a 10.30 P. Well, it's less than 0 .001. <clears throat> and then we'd also want to report R squared. Bad boy there. Oops, got excited with my super text here. <coughs> so R squared here is this one, so 0.54. So this is a big effect, um, much bigger than the 0 0.03 that we estimated this at. So we're getting away with 50 states, <coughs> excuse me, because we have a um, very large effect. And so that tells me about the overall model. Now I might be interested in each individual predictor. And we'll only write out one of these just so that you're not bored watching me type all these out. But uh, it's the same effect for each one. And I've got some other videos where we write them out. Let's say we want to talk about, is illiteracy a main effect? So I would report this coefficient. This is the uh, centered coefficient. Um, and so I would say B equals, and these are not standardized, they're just centered. So that means we took the score minus the mean. Okay. And report my T value. Remember that T's degree of freedom matches your F degree of freedom, so it's 44. Equals T, that's standard error, this one's T. Okay, so it's negative 0.67. Then our p-value is 0 0.508. So this one's actually not significant. Okay. So not a significant predictor. Can't spell. 
of, of income. If I was to interpret the effect though, I would say that as illiteracy increases, income decreases, which makes sense. <clears throat> now we could keep doing this for all five of them, but let's just talk about them so you don't have to watch me type all these out. Um, so for murder, what I could say is I'm look at it. So as the murder rate increases, the income decreases, what we'd expect, but that's also not significant. Um, and so it's sort of weird because these have very, these were very correlated. So maybe they're suppressing each other out because the interaction is significant. So we could interpret this. This one is not significant either <clears throat> as our main effect. Okay. For both of them though, the interpretation is as illiteracy or murder increases, um, income decreases. Well, that's because it's a negative coefficient. Our interaction is significant, so let's write that one out. Don't capitalize word. So I would say our interaction is negative 115.56, and this is also just often just required to report these numbers, even though they're not very interpretable. 3 to 6, p value is 0 0.002. Yeah. <clears throat> and so this number, not so interpretable. I don't know what that means. So when I multiply them together, it's a negative, negative effect. So we're going to use simple slopes as a way to interpret these. And so that's the purpose of simple slopes, is to understand the significant interaction. We could also talk about our CVs. Um, in this case, um, they're both significant. Okay. So for population, that one would be significant. At P less than 0.05, very close. So as population increases, income increases, <clears throat> which is... Um, because it's a positive slope. And then as the same thing for area, also significant. So as area increases, um, income increases as well. <coughs> and, that, and that isn't too surprising. So as pe more people are in an area, maybe there are more big jobs. Um, sports teams, that sort of thing. And then for area, the more area you have, the more people you can have, the more people you can have, the more kind of varied and big jobs often tend to flock to very populated areas. So like Silicon Valley, um, Houston, New York, those sorts of things. Okay. So income is a very skewed variable to predict sometimes. Okay. So we can write all those up. But let's get to the interesting part. What is this interaction? scroll down here. If you wanted to know what the increase was by adding the interaction. So we, I showed you the two versions of power and um, the question was uh, if I just looked at the uh, power of the interaction, that's actually right here. So this is a really handy line for purposes of power. So essentially, if we tested it with the four predictors and then added the interaction, that would have actually increased our R squared by 0.12. So our original R squared is up here, it's 0 0.54. 0 0.12 of that is the interaction. Okay, we can do a direct subtraction here. Um, so uh, math, four, four of that, no, four two of that is all the other variables, but 0.12 is the interaction. So I underestimated the effect earlier when I was doing power. And I could actually write this up in the same way. The addition of the interaction, so let me just show you here. I could say something like, uh, the addition of the interaction was significant, uh, a significant change to the model might be a good way to say this. Okay, depending on how you feel about the word significant. <clears throat> so 11.26. Uh, P equals 0.002. Okay, you'll notice this p-value matches the um, p-value for the coefficient. <coughs> Pardon me. 
And then I can say R squared change. Um, you could do delta R squared if you were interested in doing a symbol for that. Cool point one two. And so that would tell people how much your interaction mattered. I still haven't told you what happened though. So keep going. This is the part. This is one of the, um, I feel like more difficult pieces to interpret in this output. The rest is very uh, kind of similar standard regression. So what you'll see here is for the moderator. So that's why it says murder here, which is kind of amusing in a stats output, right? Where people feel like murdering someone when they're doing stats. Um, what you see is this is the, the, the area of the variable we're looking at. Okay, so these are called simple slopes. Okay. We talked about one standard deviation below the mean. Okay. And so for murder, that's minus 3.69 below mean. Okay, so 3.69 here is the standard deviation of murder, so below the average murder score. So you could actually calculate the average murder, which we've already done. So let's go back to SPSS just real quick like. And at the very beginning, we actually calculated our statistics. So our average murder rate is 7.38. So this is three points below that. So this is at places that have a murder rate of around three. <clears throat> if you want to get very tangible on what the score means. So scores for, for states that are below the murder rate. Okay? We didn't separate these. We're kind of pretending what happens is everybody's scores are lower. You know, so we're kind of looking at an area of the chart. We don't really create groups. Okay, that's the hardest part people get about simple slopes is these are not groups. These are like like you're zooming in and looking at just this area of the graph where murder is lower than normal. And so that's what the first slope is. For one standard deviation below the mean, now let's get into where it says effect. Effect here is the the slope, so it's B. <clears throat> okay. So I'm gonna write this one up. And then now it becomes um, the same T stuff we reported before. So T is 44, um, it's 1.20, P is not significant here, so 0.236, if I get excited. Okay. And so my interpretation here is that for low murder rates, okay, so this is for rates of murder that are below the mean, um, illiteracy, because illiter lit literacy, which is stupidly hard to spell, does not predict income. So for the low murder rates, illiteracy does not predict income. Um, if it did, it would be positive, which would be very odd, right? Because then that would be implying that um, as illiteracy goes up, income goes up, which isn't normal. <laughs> um, so this one has a bit of a weird effect at the bottom, but it's not predictive. Okay. So uh, in places with low murder rates, illiteracy and income are unrelated. Okay. This next line is average. Okay. So when it says zero here, that implies average. So if I say it's zero below the mean, murder, there we go. Zero below the mean means it is the mean. <clears throat> and we do the same reporting that we did before. So B equals negative 0.114. You'll notice hopefully this number is familiar. This is the number you actually get with the overall model because the overall model, since it's centered, is at the average levels of variables. So when I said that centering helps you interpret um, interpret the model, that's because when you center it, zero now becomes average, and so the model, the, the um, overall one that's presented up here in the output, is actually the interpretation of the average score. Okay. So T44 is negative 0 0.67, P equals 0 0.508, so this one's also not significant. Okay, it just did a weird tabbing thing, but that's all right. <laughs> so for average murder rates, illiteracy does not predict outcome, um, income. 
this is at least negative. That makes sense. So, so far we're uh, not doing so good because nothing is predictive. But I get this question a lot. So the question is, what happens <coughs> when the interaction is significant? And whatever you mean by significant, 0 0.10, 0 0.05, whatever. Um, but none of the simple slopes are significant. And so what this implies that there are differences in the slopes um, <clears throat> but that the main effect is not significant. Okay. So what happens there, and this happened, um, has happened enough that people have asked it a lot, um, is that there are differences between the slope values. So 311 is different than negative 114, which seems pretty obvious. Um, but there's no main effect of that variable. So you have to ask yourself if those differences in the slopes are interesting enough to report, even though those slopes are not predictive of, of y. It's kind of a tricky one to be in because um, that variable is not predictive of y, but there are differences in that variable given this other one. Okay. All right, let's do the last one, which is positive one standard deviation above mean. Okay, so we're saying that murder equals uh, 3.69 points above the mean. Okay. So these are high murder rates, okay, which would be about 10 or 11 in this data set. Uh, we're going to say B is negative 0.5, 541.39. T is still 44 degrees of freedom from before. This one is significant helps us with interpretation a little bit. And so now our interpretation is for high murder rates, <coughs> um, illiteracy uh, negatively predicts uh, income or put better as illiteracy increases income decreases. It's a lot of I words together. All right, so as the literacy goes up, income goes down, which is we ex the effect we expected. Um, and so here what we're saying is it doesn't really matter below the, at the mean or below the mean, but once those murder rates get really high, also having illiteracy high rates is particularly negative impact on income. So as they're increasing together, it's creating a more and more negative effect on income is how I'd interpret this. So the increases in murder rates and increasing illiteracy very highly negatively impacts income. Okay. Now this Johnson name in here, I'm gonna actually flip back over to SPSS. It's a little easier to read because <clears throat> it lines up nicely. <coughs> So what happens with the Johnson Neyman is that we'll find the 0.05 spot, which is here at 1.685. Uh, no, I'm sorry, yeah, it's hard to read. Uh, 1.685, and then it kind of fans out from there. Okay. And so we're looking for the spot at which it's 0.05. And then um, that allows us to kind of see the zones of significance is sometimes what this is called. Okay, so let's go back. So we found that here is the spot. Now, on some of these, there may not be a spot where it's exactly 0.05, or um, they may all be significant, and there's no, the data doesn't show you these zones. Well, basically, everything from here down is where the income illiteracy um, relationship is significant, and then everything from here up is where it's not significant. So you could say that this becomes especially important at 1.66 above the mean. Okay, this is not where murder is 1.66, right? Because murder can't be negative. Um, it's where this is 1.66 above the mean. <clears throat> and so this essentially finds the, the, the places where the variables are significant. So it may be none, if none of your simple slopes are significant, or it may be that everything is significant. They're just different levels of significance, if you will. But uh, what... What that really means is they may all be P less than 0.001. It's just that they're different. So the numbers are physically different. Okay. 
Um, the thing I like about the Johnson name is that if, it, if it's in this scenario, it's easy to interpret, right? So when the murder rate gets 1.66 above the mean, so about 7.3 plus 1.66 is about 9, uh, that's where income and illiteracy are related. Below that, they're not related. So that kind of makes a nice um, selling point for your analysis. The last thing you can do is create a very ugly plot. <laughs> um, I'd actually recommend doing these in Excel, <clears throat> but if you want to make an ugly plot, <laughs> I, I, I shouldn't laugh too much because this is really great that, he, that these numbers are given to you <coughs> so that you can um, create graphs and I really appreciate it, but <laughs> man, the plot's ugly. <laughs> so we're going to copy this. We're going to go over to SPSS and we're going to do file, new, syntax. Okay. If you've never opened a syntax window before, it won't be too painful. We're going to paste that directly, okay. highlight all of it, just click this giant green button for go, basically. This is going to create you a new data set, which you'll see if you hit the data button. So it's created me a data set. Um, that has made me this plot and it kind of allows you to see this interaction. So um, one thing you can do is kind of clean up this plot a little bit. So I'm going to double click on it. Now a graph, uh, the graph chart editor does not always like me on my Mac, so I'm going to do my best here. Move this thing over here. First thing I can do is click on this gray background and tell it to give me no background. Apply. That makes it a little easier to see. You can also add lines of fit. Okay. So add fit line at total, add fit line at subgroups. Oops. There's a way, this one? Eh. Okay, you can't do that. But if we could, we could add um, the fit line for each one. So we'd play connect the dots. Right. <clears throat> um, but essentially what we can see is that for the low rate, this dots, blue dots here are going up at the meet, at the average, it's a slight decrease. And then at the most, it's a, a negative increase. And if you're better at um, the chart editor than I am, you can make this graph actually look like something useful. So we could change these labels here to be low because what's negative 3.6, right? So I could say low ones standard deviation below mean here I could change this one so I'm clicking once and then clicking twice to get it to do this and then this is why I said it hates me gotta click carefully right <clears throat> so plus one SD above mean so you can edit all of these things. Um, let me just try adding this one. Nah, okay, we don't want that. Okay, how do I undo? So don't add something to your plot that you don't want because then undoing it apparently is half of Christmas. <clears throat> Go away. So at some point you would be able to delete these things. <laughs> Go away, delete. There it goes. <clears throat> and so uh, the only thing I would recommend adding is adding the line somehow. Um, there's a way to get it to play connect the dots. Um, if I remember how, I'll put it in the um, in the box that explains what this video is. Okay, hit close. And now it'll update your charts. This one's a little better, but it does allow you to at least visualize the data. If you want, you can Google um, simple slopes in Excel and there are ways, um, little, gra little templates that people have made to make this easier for you to enter and you have a lot more control over how everything looks um, because Excel gives you a little bit more power there. Okay. So all that taken together is our simple slopes output. Uh, so this is how to run a, a moderation analysis with CVs. Um, and then interpreting simple slopes, power, and making those graphs.